everyone, Dennis and Stephanie K here. Hello. How you doing, baby? Great. Good, good. So, hey, listen, um, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, we gave her a little story of how we ended up leaving Michigan, moving down to Belize, and now, of course, we're in France. But uh, who knows what the next adventure is. Uh, anyway, I said in that video, or we said, that uh, we would take your questions uh, because a lot of you are looking at buying property in Belize or you maybe you have brought property and now you're looking at something to do with that property. Maybe you want to live there part-time, full-time. And so uh, Steph and I have been collecting a list of questions that you've been sending in. So we thought we'd start to answer them today. Sounds good. All right. So the number one question that I've received over the past 14 days is... Have you ever felt like you have island fever living on Ambergris Key? I mm. really thought this was going to be a problem for me. Yeah, and closely related to that question is, is there enough to do on Ambergris Key to keep me busy? So why don't we have you start to answer this one for us? Well, before we lived on the island, we lived on the mainland of Belize. And weirdly enough, I felt more island fever in a small village on the mainland that I did in Ambergris Key because... Mm. Ambergris Key has um, a lot of wonderful restaurateurs who, you know, add things to their restaurants constantly. There's big choices. And it also kind of feels like, because the island is so relatively big, to me at least, um, that you can go north if you want a change of scenery. You can go south. You can, I mean, we would vacation on the island even though we lived at a resort. So we would go, you know, north and uh, spend the night for an anniversary or sometimes we would get, have a nice restaurant res reservation and spend the night there. Um, so I didn't feel it at all. Uh, it's wide enough. It's long enough. Uh, it has all the cozy things where everyone who you see, they're like, hey, how's it going? Even if they don't know your name, but most of them do if they're in your neighborhood. Um, I like that part of it, but I didn't feel that way. I think I'd feel that way more going back to my hometown because, um, I don't know, it was new to me maybe. My hometown is beautiful and fun, but it's home yeah. this is more of like an exciting adventure and things change all the time different seasons different people different everything so i i thought i might have a problem with it but i didn't at all and i how long did we live there years uh, and years 11 years full time and yeah. just key so i think when you're talking about island fever people are really what they mean by that is they start to go stir crazy because uh, nothing is exciting anymore it's the same old boring life day after day and you can get that anywhere, but really on Ambergris Key, there is enough to keep a person really busy if they want to be, or if, they, if they're a bookworm and they just want to uh, sit on the veranda, lay in the hammock and read books all day, uh, they can do that too. <laughs> so yeah, so we're, we're sort of mismatched when it comes to that. I'm a little bit more active. I like to get out more and do things where you give her a, a good book and a hammock and um, she can sit there all afternoon. So what kind of things... Would you tell people there is to do on Ambergris Key? Like, at any given day, wake up, what kind of things would we do? Well, it depends. Um, if we have guests in town or, like, vacationers or what you guys would do when you first get there is um, take advantage of the snorkeling. Uh, one of our favorite things to do is day sailing. So even when we weren't on vacation, we would go alone. And uh, you go out with a captain and maybe, depends, you can have a group of your friends or you can go out with just random, about 10 people. And they give you rum punch, they give you ceviche and salsa and plantain chips and you snorkel. Or if you don't want to snorkel, sometimes I would just put my music in, or they have amazing music too, and just lay on in between the catamaran on the little net in between there and um, listen to music or listen to a book and the sea breezes come over you. So we would do that. Um, but like you said, he's a little more adventurous or a little more active. So like when we would... Um, have more days I would sit by the pool and maybe read or play on my iPad or um, social media or whatever, and he would kayak or something that's take a run or a walk down the beach, whereas I only run when people are chasing me. So. <laughs> Not really a runner. No. No, no. So, well, I have asthma, so it is like an actual pain. Yeah, so like Steph said, we would take advantage of uh, going out in the water. So we would go to uh, maybe Key Cocker for the day, explore the neighboring island. Um, one of my favorite things to do, our favorite thing, is, is go out to lunch. There's yeah. fantastic restaurants for lunch and dinner all over Ambergris Key. Meet friends yeah, yeah, for lunch. And like she said, sometimes it would be a quick lunch. Like maybe I was working in the morning. She'd meet me somewhere for lunch at noon at Blue Water Grill, or Victoria House, or somewhere like that. But at some, sometimes it would be uh, very romantic. 
Yeah, know, definitely. We would, uh, we would spend the night where we went to yeah, lunch. Yeah, sometimes. So when she talks about spending the night when we go to dinner, what we would do is we would book a, a restaurant like at Mambo's at Matachica, which is a resort about uh, seven miles north of town. Uh, so we would have a boat take us up there. We'd grab an overnight bag, uh, eat an amazing dinner, uh, fantastic food with wine, spend the night on one of their beautiful beachfront casitas, the next day come back. Uh, we did it at several several resorts. Yeah, we stayed a couple nights sometimes. Yeah. That way you can um, go for lunch the next day, and they have pools, uh, change of scenery, um, walk up and down their beach. And I like beach combing, yeah. uh, looking for things that um, I'm a, a sea glass hunter. So we have a reef, so that we don't get as much sea glass, but not as much trash either. But you can find really cool things. Through the history of the island, many people have found so, so many cool things, thus right. ambergris. Yeah, absolutely. Ambergris yeah. I think, too, uh, we don't feel as much um, island fever like you would in Keycocker. Keycocker is very, very small. I do feel it there. Yeah, yeah. If, if I'm on a Keycocker for any more than 48 hours, I start to go a little stir-crazy myself. But uh, Ambergris Key, like Steph said, it's it's 25 miles long by 4 miles wide at its widest. And every, every mile it changes. The scenery yeah. changes. So like San Pedro Town, it's busy. It's bustling. There's the grocery stores, there's the vegetable shops, um, you know, the school kids running around. But you go just one or two miles to the south, uh, for instance, in the um, South Amherstski subdivision where the Hilton Curio Collection Hotel is, there's a great little coffee and rum bar there called the Rum and Bean. That's got a totally different feel to it. You love it. Yeah, them. I do. So sometimes I would take my computer down there, open up the computer, work for a few hours by having a, an, an incredible coconut latte um, or maybe even a rum. Maybe, Heck yeah. Maybe. There's, a, there's a secret beach. There's um, just all sorts of areas that you can go. And plus, you know, if you do, let's say you've been on an island for a while. Uh, you're one of those that come down for two or three months a year. Um, tell them about what we used to do. We used to go to the mainland for a mainland break, some of the areas we would check out. Well, I didn't want to be one of those people who lived in a country and didn't get to know the entire country because... Um, Belize is rich in biodiversity. You can go and see the rainforest. I mean, we went through um, to go cave tubing through with a Mayan shaman. His father was a shaman, his grandfather. So they taught him the herbs. So I didn't have um, bug spray and bugs love me and don't love him. It's maddening. Don't hate. <laughs> they all come to me. I've only met one other person. That's worse. Now, I just let me. When you say shaman, you mean someone who is an expert at using uh, well, was, medicinal plants and yeah, herbs in the forest. I was continuing. Okay. So, he ended up. I said, "Oh, I don't have any bug spray." He said, "No worries, no worries." And so he took, you know, some random to me plant and crushed it up. And he said, "Here, rub this on you." And it was getting to be dusk, and you know, no one else was being bothered, but I just especially get bothered. And this was on the mainland by the rivers, and it, he. Um, was right it worked so like his grandfather taught him the ways of the jungle um his grandfather's grandfather and so a lot of the really neat um discoveries come from the rainforest so it's if you just stop to listen and then go down and go in through the caves and it's just relaxing and wonderful so that was one of my favorite yeah so you have all of the mainland and places to discover uh so you can go to the mayan ruins you can go cave tubing horseback riding uh canoeing down the rivers uh, so much to see. You can go into these little um, authentic, real-life Mayan villages down in the Punta Gorda area, which is just incredible. The people are so welcoming. Yeah, but also you can use Belize as a uh, as an area to explore the surrounding uh, Central American countries and Mexico. Like, uh, we would go up to uh, Playa del Carmen. Yeah, it was nice. I mean, some of the nice slash... I missed it when I was there because I am American, but, like, we didn't have... A McDonald's or Burger King or any of that stuff. So every once in a while, I would get a hankering for extreme junk food. So although the burgers at Blue Water Grill blow that away, yeah. of course. But still, sometimes you, you just know, need your McDo. Yeah, sometimes you just want a little bit of the junk food. So um, that was a great, you know, reason to go to Mexico. We would go to Mexico. We would stay. They had like hot tub. Um, you're seeing this. I really like hot tubs. <laughs> hot tub jacuzzi places that you could go and relax. Um, there's a lot of shopping. It's a lot of fun, a lot of kitchen stuff, and a lot of like real Mexican food that was neat to discover. A lot of um, actual Mexican food, not just American Mexican food. Mm -hmm. And um, the Mexican people, the hospitality uh, in Mexico. There's, I mean, it's huge. So there's so many places to explore. 
Yeah. So I really liked, uh, we would fly from Ambergris Key uh, to the border between Belize and Mexico. Uh, and we would take the bus, about a four hour bus ride up to Playa del Carmen. And uh, we have some friends there that own condos and we would get really nice oceanfront condos, stay for a week, uh, eat at all the cool restaurants, drink at all the cool uh, rooftop bars, the beach clubs, mm -hmm. uh, maybe take the ferry over to um, Cozumel uh, for the day and just explore that. Take a little, uh, what did we rent one time? A convertible? But, uh, bug. Red bug. Com red convertible Beetle. bug. Drove around to the, let's see, what would have been the far east side of Cozumel, hung out at this isolated beach, got the car stuck. It was awesome. Tons of sea glass. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. So yeah, so like when you, the, the question here was, do you get island fever when you live on Amherst Key? Absolutely not. Um, there are some things we're going to say for our next video regarding how to get to the mainland and how to travel back and forth and when especially you might want to do that and kind of figure that in your plans for the month or for the year. So um, what do you say we end this video now? We'll pick it up next time. But hopefully that answers your question and I keep sending them in. We'll try to record a couple of these videos a week and uh, let you know what life is really like as an expat in Belize. Bye. See ya.